right, welcome to the STOA, everyone. Uh, the last session of uh, the mini practicum on verbal Aikido. Uh, we've had Luke Archer here um, joining us, giving uh, not only the 101 on verbal Aikido, but really going a deep dive on each of the three movements sections uh, of, of the practice. Um, and today we're doing channeling the attack, I believe. Uh, and if you're interested in um, learning more about verbal Aikido, Luke will kind of uh, give his information near the end, but I definitely recommend this book. I think this is his newest one. You had a couple old ones um, from conflict to conversation. Uh, and verbal Aikido is one of the kind of the, the modalities the, in the ecology of stuff that we look at here in the STOA that I highly recommend along with circle and collective presencing. This is the only one that I, I really find that handles verbal conflict and energy in the conversational wild quite nicely. Um, so that being said, I we're here definitely for 60 minutes. We might go to the full 90 minutes. Um, I'll tag in Luke in a moment. He'll share his uh, screen and we'll have a presentation and then we'll engage in some questions and exercises. So that being said, uh, I'll tag you in Luke. Welcome back to the STOA. Thank you, Peter. Thank you all for, for coming again uh, this week. Uh, yeah, today it's the, um, the third of three uh, installments, uh, sessions on the practice. Very, kind of different than what we've, we would sort of normally uh, share in, in terms of sort of a, a discovery of the practice, but that's what it is. Um, and yeah, Peter very kindly asked me to sort of do this in, in three um, installments, in, in three steps. So what we're, what we're going to look at, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, we're going to look at today sort of the three steps that we've taken together. This is our third. Um, let me do that. All right. There we go. You guys see that? Okay, good. All right. So, um, yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to look really at the the the. We're going to sort of give it an overview of what we looked at today thus far, what we've done. Um, we're going to do a little bit on um, a deep dive, as as Peter said, on the third step, and that's what we're going to look at today. And I'm going to get you guys practicing. Uh, a lot of you did a bit of practice, maybe in the first session, the second session, different types of practice. We'll talk about that too. But uh, yeah, today is kind of really what the, the core of the practice is about, which is. Number one, that sort of uh, the direction of, of harmony, which we're going to look at, and uh, yeah, practicing. Um, that's that's why we're doing this. Uh, so basically, uh, as I said last week, the the practice is really about um, recognizing tension and sort of it, it avoiding it from escalating. Um, and these are just sort of key skills that you can have for the map. What we looked at in the first week was this idea of self. So we looked at getting centered in an emergency. You might remember that sort of that movement when you were sort of coming back to just being able to say yes or no in, in that centered sort of way. Um, and as, as Peter also shared, we're, we're uh, really exploring that time between the stimulus and response to be able to sort of come back down to uh, that sort of that self position, just really centered. Um, which is, again, a really good uh, um, skill, I guess, to, to work on. Uh, I think you can call it that. Uh, the other skill that we worked on last week, especially, was um, focusing on the other. So getting to the meaning of their expression, trying to really give them that space to be understood. Um, so, um, yeah, that was stretching last week. Uh, it kind of helped us work on that, especially that second posture. So um, sort of moving to, towards the other person uh, can, can seem sort of counterintuitive sometimes, but uh, definitely it, it really is sort of the magic moment of the, um, of the practice. The third uh, thing that we're going to look at um, today, which is the, the us part. So it's sort of exploring those directions that you can go with other people. And there's different sorts of harmony. There is not enough to be covered at all in uh, in the sessions today, but it's uh, it's good just to, to sort of use what you've heard in the second session, in the second step, to uh, to then start to say right, what what sort of harmony is possible? What am I aligned with in uh, in myself as a uh, uh, you know a practitioner? So um, 
it's funny that you know we looked like I said we looked at sort of three steps um, that I hope that's helped you guys follow what the sort of the, the, the core concepts are. Um, so hold on, let me just. Um, I'm gonna. Oh. All right, let me get back on track. So yeah, our, our three steps um, were basically centeredness, that tension, the accompanying the other, which we did last week, stretching eternally that sort of different ways to communicate effectively. And today, like I said, we're going to be exploring harmony um, as a conscious mindset. So uh, we're going to deep dive into step three, and then I'm going to try to set you guys up to, to feel comfortable or to feel at least okay about practicing. Hopefully you feel good about it. Um, so basically the three core concepts that we were always exploring and covering is the idea of centering. Uh, so that's connection with self, it's alignment. Um, I guess the, the key thing, thing to aim at there is that share that you're sharing a centered feeling, that it's not, you know, you're not just there going, okay, I'm I'm fine, and the other person's getting annoyed, uh, and well, that's their problem. But you're actually there with that centeredness, just expanding with it. So the uh, the second of the three core concepts is as in a listening, it's that presence with the other, empathy. It's a real empathy move. Um, that you're, yeah, you're sort of trying to see things from another person's perspective or feel things, and and really give them that space. So again, just if if you can imagine that sort of physical like you to move of kind of going towards the other person, but sort of stepping behind them, and to and you can if you're stepping behind a person, then you can sort of see in the same direction as them. Uh, so and the third step, like I said, that we're going to look at today is blending. So. Um, it's kind of the idea of IQ. Um, we talk about sort of the whole as being in harmony with all, with everything that's going around. Um, and this step requires quite a lot of creativity because so, like I said, you're, 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 you're taking from what you've understood from the other person to your own alignment. And then you're sort of seeing, well, what, what, how can I mash these two together? Or, or what, what connections can be made in that? So I guess in essence, you're aiming at sort of discerning a uh, what sort of relationship is possible uh, and then you, you can propose it or just uh, recognize it so I guess that's the um they're the, they're the sort of the three things that we aim at and I guess you know aim at the centered feeling you can we can all get sort of better at that uh, and likewise for the other two um so kind of a deep dive at um what that third step is um, so basically, we're, we're always kind of aiming for these harmonious outcomes. So you get a sense, and you might have recognized that in the last session, this, this idea of it, when you use certain moves, a person will, there will be sort of an, an opening. So you're going to create, uh, you can create, or you can just observe a sort of shift of energy. So that's the moment where you're going to step in and, you know, may either recognize Aiki, um, which is kind of like what we call sh sharing common ground. So you might even just go something like, you know, me too. So somebody might say, well, you know, I don't know how it took you so long to get here. And I'm like, me too. I don't know how it took me so long to get here. So um, that's just a move back, coming back into that, that sort of uh, that, that us movement, um, which can be proposed as well. So uh, in, in a specific situation, you once you recognize maybe a, an energy opening so a, a place where a person is is like uh you'll you'll notice it with things like um generally three different things you'll notice their eyes moving you'll notice their voice hesitating uh or you'll notice a physical shift in their body so they'll you know um they might sort of back off a bit or they might just just turn slightly or uh, bring their arms up in a, in a sort of protective manner or something like that so you'll notice some of these are signs for uh for for you to maybe propose an energy shift and it can be a really nice one to do uh with we talk about synchronous and asynchronous styles of harmony so really quickly on that before um we actually start to step on to, or get a bit of a check going and then step onto the map. But um, the, uh, the idea of synchronous and asynchronous harmony is that synchronous harmony is one where it's like more co-creative. So you're, you're seeing the other person as 
as as like a compadre, like you're there, you're there working together with them towards something. So a an IQ you might propose might be something like, um, well, how about we sit down and see how we can work this out? Really simple, um, uh, bright future IQ is what's called. So that's that's in the more sort of synchronous. So both people are um, on a similar sort of level, if you like. The asynchronous harmony is like either you're helping the other person or they're helping you. So that's, you know, sort of asynchronous harmony, it's not good or a bad side of harmony. It's just that in certain relationships, for example, if you take parents or, or bosses or things like that, that they'll have an asynchronous relationship, relationship with their children or their, their employees because they'll be ideally helping them. Um, and, and they're perfectly aligned, both are aligned with that, so that style of harmony. So, and again, on the other side, a movement might be to say to somebody, so they might attack you, 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 you look really ugly today. And you, you can say, well, what do you mean? And they say, oh, yeah. and what would you prefer? So you, again, these are sort of key moves that you, you, you'll, you'll sort of, you're basically prodding to try and understand more uh, from where the, where the person perceives things. And then it might be, well, how about uh, we go shopping? You can maybe help me uh, find some cool clothes or something, you know? So, so, so you might propose that. And again, what we notice is that people will, the energy shifts when you um, when, when you find that alignment with that other person that actually is a harmonious direction. Um, again, you always this is key. We say this also about IKEA. It's when you propose an IKEA, you got to be aligned with that IKEA. That's actually got to be something that you genuinely um, would be, you know, uh, comfortable with doing. So uh, don't propose an IKEA that that you're not uh, sort of willing to go along with yourself. So I wouldn't, for example, say, okay, let's 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 go drink whiskey if I don't if I don't drink, right? So that sort of thing. Um, okay, so um, yeah, I think that that's kind of the sort of key overview of the three. The, 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 we've looked at the, the three different steps, and uh, this is the sort of the one on the third one. I do want to hear your shares on this, and then we're going to start looking at how we step onto the map with uh, uh, with cases or what we call opportunities to practice. Okay, so let me take this off. So would you like to do a um, q &A? Yeah, do you want to start some questions on that, Peter, or um, anyone's got any shares? Um, yeah, I just maybe just a comment that I like that uh, synchronous asynchronous, asynchronous uh, harmony framing. I quite I quite enjoyed that. Um, maps over a lot of stuff that I, I've been doing. Um, but no, no direct questions for me. If anyone has any questions, just feel free to popcorn style, unmute yourself and ask Luke your question. Okay, good, because the sooner we get to practice, the better. Um, all right. Yes, uh, SOS. <laughs> if somebody knows some of the moves. Absolutely, uh, that's good. Uh, in fact, that's, yeah, that's what we call them. Um, an SOS is, is it's that move when you ask for help. The nice examples of it is what would you recommend? What would you suggest? What would you do for you were in my shoes? Things like that. Um, they can be blocked quite easily. Somebody might say something like, you know, uh, well, that's not my problem. And it, it, then you just go to sort of a, sort of it's, it's a variant on an SOS. So who would you recommend I go to see if, if they block? So you, you don't, again, there, there, there's moves that we've just uh, developed from, from working hard and getting people who are really aggressive to uh, We really need people who, are, who have good sort of fight in them to, to be able to, to practice properly on the map. Um, and so that's the call an SOS. The lifeline absolutely is when you, um, you, ask the other, you ask the other person if they, they would like some help. So it's basically, can I help you with this in any way? Um, which can be really, it can it'd be a very quick move of what we call lightning moves sometimes. Sometimes uh, a, a lightning muscle sometimes this is just crazy and say how can I help you here and it sort of brings the energy back down um okay I, I see another question do you ever deal straight on them with just actual disagreement it feels like energy dance but not direct and well I just I'll give you an example of a uh, there are some sort of lightning moves that you can do and that, that you you're that can shift the energy quickly around um I would say that you always deal straight on them with what's coming on you always deal with what's coming but it's it's, it's yes you're you're not avoiding i guess, I guess the, the topic and you shouldn't sort of try to change the topic that's not a um that's not the objective of this it's, it's not just sort of sort of play that it is about sort of connecting with the other person so um 
yeah, I guess um, when you're whatever you deal with, you're 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 managing that attack so that you're sort of circling it around and trying to flow with that attack, um, so that the you know that that, that it comes to some sort of uh, I guess some, some energy that is much more manageable. That it's just basically you're taking away the oomph from the uh, uh, the aggressivity of, of the uh, of the communication if you just. Uh, that so so there's another question there um luke can i jump in before you get to jeremy's question um so one thing i've been journaling about recently is reasoning and then like dealing with disagreements like argument argumentation um and you know if the conditions are right like john verveke calls his dialogos then you can just kind of get into a flow state where you're in dialectic and you're disagreeing with each other but it's like good faith quote unquote good faith is present um and and this, this verbal aikido stuff it's like when you sense bad faith is present, even if the person's saying the truth or they're providing a really tight argument, if they're coming in a way that like to attack you or to weaponize your argument some way, it's like, then you do these, these, these moves. Um, but I really like this distinction, like getting discernment to telling what's good faith and what's bad faith. Because people can be attacking you with bad faith and you're not responding. Then they're like, hey, you're, you're bad faith for avoiding my argumentation and all that type of stuff. But you know, they're, you know, you have that discernment that they're, they're, they're coming in for an attack. So how would you describe that, like that, the essence of good faith and bad faith uh, and having the discernment to know when bad faith is online and more verbal keto techniques is a, more appropriate rather than just like straightforward answering the person's uh, question in a reasonable way? Well, great question. Um, well, well, first of all, the sort of on, on, that, on that binary perspective of sort of good faith and bad faith, you can go along with that and say, right, so yes, some people are good faith and some people are bad faith. Um, with good faith, yes, things just generally generally do tend to flow. Um, uh, if there is bad faith detected, you recognize it. You start to go, oh, all right, um, it's not that sort of relationship. <laughs> okay, so so you're basically going to going to shift from that um, posture to just an alternative posture where you you're able to protect yourself. Now, how you protect yourself is is varied in different ways uh, as you kind of brought up last uh, session i think it was that you know it, you got people where, where there's teasing going on going on and so obviously if, if you're sort of doing if sort of there's teasing then you can sort of blend with that energy and sort of tease back etc and that, that can create complicity too so but 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 if there's um sort of bad faith and, and it's creating that tension yeah that's the moment where you go i mean vertically in essence is about protecting self and the other so you're you're always coming back to that right i i've discerned what sort of relationship this is now always stay open of course but you know discerning what the the the, the um yeah the, the the sort of relationship you can have with the person and if, if they're always in bad faith then either you're just going to go okay i'm going to accept that as part of their whole of course and uh when you know when they're communicating with me then i, I know to take maybe a further step back than i would normally um does that answer your question peter does, does it give you a sort of a an overview on it yeah yeah and, and then what comes up too is um like the internal detection is like the fight or flight response comes up uh, I think that is a component of when bad faith is present, but it's not the only, you can't just reduce it to that, I don't think. But it's also like the other, on the other person's end, if like they have the desire to connect, you know, it's not just in service towards truth or, or whatever, but if there's a, like a lack of desire to build a harmonious relationship, then I think bad faith is um, present. Um, but maybe we can tease up more heuristics, but yeah, that, that was helpful. It, no, it's a huge, it's a huge topic though, because I mean, when we start again into the the concept of deception, which is kind of the antithesis of what verbal acute is about, uh, it, it, because you're always sort of aiming at sort of having sincerity in no matter what posture you're practicing. So once there is a deception and lying and things like that, that that come into play, that creates an automatic um, imbalance in the relationship. So you know. It, it, you, there is moments to let go of things, and that's again another posture that you you might use to be able to uh, sort of move on to the, the a possible relationship with the person. But yeah, it, it creates um, it, it creates imbalance, and people are generally lying and things like that, causing deception because they're trying to protect something. If you can slowly and smoothly understand what they're trying to protect, things can move off from there. And often it's their ego. So. Yeah. That's given to you. There's, quite, there's a lot of good questions that, that came up there too. Um, um, asynchronous, 
how does that how does asynchronous relate to power dynamics? That's the first one I see there. Um, Well, I think it's about how, how verbal Aikido relates to power dynamics. In, in um, asynchronous uh, harmony is just an observation of styles of a relationship of harmony. Um, the power dynamics, power is another style of relationship. One person having power or wanting to have power over another. Um, in, in essence, verbal Aikido just doesn't enter into that sort of game. It's well, it blends with it and then proposes uh, an alternative game. It's basically taking Taking a, a binary position, dominate, be dom, you know, be dominated, uh, into into something sort of opening it up and exploring, saying, right, domination, being dominated, is a type of relationship, but there's others. How about we explore it? Um, I guess that that that's as good as I'm going to get today on that question. Um, right? How does we avoid the trap of pathological empathy? Interesting, and a tendency to be to blend toward the other during the step. Three harmony. Ah, well, it's a great question. Um, what we call we actually call the, the type of empathy that we're entering into is what we call protected empathy. So it's it's there's a style of um, discernment towards you. So you are actually entering into their perspective, um, but like um, you know, there's different ways to enter. There's different sort of uh, energy, not just energies, but uh, sort of impact that you're going to, how much of yourself are you going to give to that other person? How much are you going to connect with that other person? Um, obviously, I think if the person is asking this question, I, 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 can, I can really feel for that because it's, it's, it's like, if you're, if you're too empathic with somebody, then you kind of lose some feathers um, and you come out of it in a, um, it, you've actually entered into their pain as well. And that, that can be, uh, yeah, that can, that can cause some, some damage, but, um, so, so to avoid doing that, I think that's the, the, the essence of the question. Um, when, when you're in step, exactly, when you're in step three, you're, all you're proposing is always um, something that you're aligned with. So um, how do you decide with that person? How, you know, how close you're going to get that? I guess that takes practice and, and just understanding, it, well, if I propose this, uh, is that going to be abused or is that going to be, you know, not, not taken as a, uh, 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 you know, as a style of relationship that that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's interesting to move forward with. But um, I don't know if that answered that question. I'm not sure. Um, it was Ryan who asked that. Ryan, can you sort of give us a bit of feedback on that? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I definitely uh, hear you saying that step one is really important, right? You got to center yourself so that you're aligned with step three when you try to harmonize. But so like I'm spinning this MMA or like martial arts type metaphor that you're introducing with verbal Aikido. Like if Aikido goes into the wild type realm of like mixed martial arts, it's going to get destroyed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like somebody's going to come in and just do some really nefarious shit there. And so like, I'm also reminded in the question I asked, Peter likes to bring up this idea of like the sneaky fucker mating strategy, what you mean? This, which is like the pathologic empathy. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm going to align myself with you really hardcore, tend and befriend, but also in that state, maybe not preserve myself or be inauthentic to where I am. So I'm just here in that stage one is, yeah. uh, is really important, but also in like the, the wild uh, conversational wild, you're going to encounter all of these other forms. Um, and so I yeah. guess, how do you protect yourself and also use strategies that aren't necessarily inauthentic? Yeah, well, th th that's good. Yeah, yeah. Great question and absolutely well framed in the sense that, yes, you, you can always come back to the center. It's about authenticity. How do I protect myself is I just get as good as I can at, 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 at it. Um, it, it really is, um, you know, it, it comes down to that, that sense of binary. If you're saying, you know, they're going to get destroyed, well, that's, that's a, a, a binary sort of game. It's a win-lose sort of game. Um, I think I would learn a lot from someone who has really sort of high levels of uh, verbal 
jujitsu or whatever it is, you know, um, I think we could all learn a lot from 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 people who uh, who who are able to 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 use the verb in in a sort of an attacking way. But we invite them to come. It's like come to the dojo, do your attack, and we'll will will show how it can step. It might actually step out of a binary win lose movement towards something that actually could be harmonious it could be, you know i've got really good attackers and saying come back and i need you here or can, can you test out my new train trainers on with your attack because it's so good um so you know um there is sort of an ecology in 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 what we do uh in, in using uh whatever whatever's been thrown at you so, so the the does that answer your question ryan in, in terms of sort of if, if the uh in the wild question yeah, I think I heard you say just expand the rule set so that like <laughs> the game never ends. Yeah, there, there, there's people who, who, who sort of view Pro Aikido as a game and absolutely in the sense that gamification is, is an, an excellent way to, to get really, really good at something if you see it as as just sort of, uh, you know, something that's that's fun to learn. Um, great, great question, Ryan. Thank you very much. Awesome. Um, Okay, uh, Sahil, excellent. Uh, I've been thinking lately that it's not so much bad faith versus good faith as the urgency in the argument. Yeah. Um, time is usually an issue in, in exchanges uh, that, that, that sort of have some sort of tension. Um, that's just a, a, as a starting point. If, if there is urgency in it, you know, there is, there's often a, a tendency to adapt to the person's um like uh impatience which we worked on that just recently in dojo it's really interesting to sort of go right if somebody's being impatient how do you how do you sort of just come back to your center without creating <laughs> without creating the other person getting annoyed that you're getting uh you know coming back to your center if, they, if, they, if they're rushed so again you do have to be if they're if they're impatient there's a certain adaptation to uh to using shorter moves using sort of very short sentences and, and sort of being kind of snappy, if you like, but not in a sort of negative way, but for they sort of uh, click, click. Um, the, um, the other point you have, Sahil, on that is uh, you can probably diffuse good faith, anxiety, paranoia using VA, for example. Faith, good faith, anxiety, and paranoia. Ah, yes, I see what you mean. Um, very possibly, yes. Um, Sahil, do you want to sort of expand on that question or if it's just a statement maybe, or a share? Yeah, no, it wasn't really a question. It was just a comment. <laughs> it was something like, if someone's like getting paranoid about, uh, I don't know, we must do this, we have to do this, and they just sort of try to steamroll over logical arguments or whatever, sensible arguments, because just the urgency in them is just really making them like uh, need to persuade people, then probably you can also help bring both people to a center and help ground it out. That's that's what I was saying. Like it's not really about good faith versus bad faith as much as it is about the urgency. Yeah, yeah. Urgency, urgency it, it is an interesting one, absolutely. Um, Peter, you you had sort of a share on the the urgency aspect too. Uh, no, I was just um, complimenting Sahil's coinage game. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and Sahih was there. You see, also saying urgency differential would be more accurate for sure. All right. Sorry. That's I'm, I'm really I'm just basically reading your conversation, guys. Okay. Um, all right. So these, there's no there's no actually more questions there. Uh, Jeremy said, if you're too empathic with someone, then you're going to lose some feathers. Okay. Yes. All right. That's quoting me. All right. Okay. Okay, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll just look for the question mark at the end of the, the lines in the chat and I'll answer it in there. Okay, guys, um, is there anything else? Feel, feel free again, as, as always, to, uh, to, sh to share, to a question or to attack. If you've got an attack for me, this is a good moment to, to illustrate it. Um, and we'll look at exactly what happens afterwards. Um, otherwise, it's going to be time for you guys to get onto the mat. Are you, I'm, I'm assuming you're ready if you've got no more questions. Fred, you want to delay a little bit? <laughs> You're good. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to step back into the shared screen then. And okay. All right. So yeah, that was um, 
we're going to step onto the map soon. And it is a courageous thing. It is important to kind of remember that, you know, uh, it, it can be difficult for people to sort of go, right, oh, yeah, I'm going to get insulted in just a minute, right? Uh, so um, many people were already on the map, maybe from this, from this uh, session. Um, two weeks ago, we, when we worked on what we call centered yes and centered no. A um, couple of you brought a good game on that. And um, well, basically, it, it's very similar to that. It just sort of uh, another um, another step further than that. that. You also, last week, we did stretching, which is a rem reminder of how we usually do this in the dojo, is uh, we'll do a salutation, a centering. Um, then we're going to do, we'll do a stretching activity. And then once we're warmed up, so that's the stretching is about uh, warming up. We're warmed up, we're, we're onto the map. And um, yeah, so basically here's how it rolls out. Um, once we were, we were warmed up, or if not before, we will have looked at what we call opportunities to practice. So basically this is before we step onto the map, we source opportunities to practice. We're, we're, we're going to ask people to share what cases, you might call it that, uh, they'll have had. So with the thick trigger phrase. So you're basically coming and saying, right, what happened was my husband got home while I, and he was really mad that the place was, was in a mess and I didn't know how to match it. So um, what was it that was said? We'll get a trigger phase. So we're trying to sort of, you know, obviously there's, there's more things going on, but we'll get the context and then we'll get the, uh, that trigger that, that, that kind of sets things off. Um, so what, what do we do with that? We, um, we then step onto the map. So basically, you, if you're the person who brought the attack, you'll be asked to go, right, so imitate that person, basically. So you'll be the attacker at first. It's also a really good uh, empathy move as well, because you sort of get to see things a little bit more from their perspective. And what the person in front of you is going to do is to maintain posture and just try and keep that energy going for as long as they can. Um, experiment with different techniques. Um, I'm going to be sure some a few, few more with you this week too. And um, basically, uh, you know, what we do after, once you're aiming to go from basically conflict to conversation, uh, and once you've noticed that energy shift, from um, that, you know, things of sort of, the person doesn't want to attack anymore, basically, that can be one of the moves, or that they start, you know, even proposing possible directions themselves. There's many different sort of ends or results of it, but basically you'll recognize that tension is gone. Um, so um, we focus on things like destabilizations, de-escalations, openings, they're the sort of key energy shifts, and we'll often sort of say, so what, what was the move there and what, what made that happen? Um, and it can also be escalations, you know, because in an exchange, you can make a, a sort of a wrong move and that's going to escalate. And then, of course, at right at the end, we'll sort of go, all right, uh, time out. And uh, people will sort of tap out often to say, right, yeah, I've got no, I've got no energy, you know, uh, either energy left sometimes or I've got no aggressivity left or whatever like that. So um, that's basically what we're going to be doing in just a minute. Um, we're going to, I guess, Peter, I'm going to get you to sort of arrange rooms of maybe three or four. Um, and what I'm going to give to you guys to uh, practice is a breath kata. Um, at least that was going to give you, I'll give you another one as well. But we talked about this last session. If you remember, there was an out and in movement. It may seem counterintuitive at first. So it was a very simple, is there anything else? which is basically a let it flow movement. Um, so you're drawing out further and then you're bringing back in again, what was the most important aspect for you? So that's basically a funnel move. So breathe out, breathe in. Um, really good in cases where there's like lots of, I think um, uh, somebody mentioned it's sort of a style attack earlier, which was, you know, they're saying this, they're saying that, and they're, they're throwing loads of, sort of trying to steamroll lots of different things maybe. Um, and you can say, okay, is there anything else? And then back down to the key idea. And that's, again, you, can, you might notice just an energy shift with that, or maybe not. But um, in any case, it's, it's, it's a nice movement that uh, accompanies a, a series of different attacks. I'm going to share it. So we, we did that. We looked at that a little bit last week. Um, I'm going to share with you this week uh, a further one, which is a nice time. It's called a timeline kata. 
It's really nice when, it when you're confronted with things like accusation or blame, but it can also work in other cases. Um, this is going to sound very similar to what you did uh, last week, if you followed in the stretching. The three of the questions you asked in stretching were, um, well, what, do you, what does this word mean for you? Um, it's called meaning prod. You asked, well, where is this coming from? That's a past prod. And where are we going with this now? And that's a future pod with a little bit of an IT sort of blended in there. So um, we, again, you don't have to use these moves in this sequence. It's, uh, it's, it's a kata. It's, uh, all katas are basically used for pedagogical purposes, mostly. Um, sometimes it works out that way that these three moves did work, but they're definitely worth exploring and, uh, and seeing what sort of effect you get, especially if you're stepping onto the map uh, for the first time. All you really need to be looking for is when does this create an opening? When does the energy shift? And like I said, the destabilization, you can recognize it by things like uh, a, a posture move, so that their actual physical position changes, that they're hesitating, that they're stammering or stuttering, um, or just blanking, uh, or that their eyes shift very often left to right, um, but other directions also possible. So, um, basically that's the, yeah, that, that's the, the, the core that we're going to be looking at in a minute. I'm going to keep them up, um, if you like, um, just, well, actually no, I'll change your mind. I'm going to bring them down so that we can, um, we can have a bit of a chat before we get, we get your, your, your own actual opportunities to practice, things that may have come up that we can bring to the mat and that we can, uh, we can play with today. So um, questions on that also, but uh, ideally if you guys have got shares of examples of situations where you think, I felt there was tension there, I felt I was attacked, this is, this is the time to share. So you want us to share kind of like past examples of when we felt um yeah if, if you're if you're, if you're out of ideas i've got like sack attack that we can play with that's just sort of a a, a list of standard attacks like yeah, you're good for nothing or um you know you're so selfish or you're always late things like that um a good one that people kind of come regularly with is you think you know you think you're always right which is a really common um attack that i've heard quite a few times in different workshops um, we can work with just you think you're always right um but you know if there's a context around something it, give, it gives it a little bit more you know a little more things to play with um yeah i imagine there's gonna be some good ones in the room so feel free stones uh, to share uh, previous ones and again just that we always sort of try to narrow it down to and call it the, the case of basically um i'm going to put that example up we'll put it in the in the chat as well um yeah. just as a uh, as an interesting one to, to to also look at a book that i would recommend I may have said it before, but uh, the ways to be right that by um, Schopenhauer, really interesting um, overview. If you, if you want to know what sort of attacks exist, and somebody mentioned it recently, the sort of the uh, the relationship between the physicality of like for, for, you know, fit, martial or physical aikido and verbal aikido, we'll often sort of have that sense of you know, well, what is the attack? You know, you you can compare it and say, okay, is it a headbutt? Is it a is it an elbow? Is it a pinch? You know, what is the attack that we're dealing with? So that's what we try and sort of, you know, bring it down to its essence in um, uh, when we get a, a phrase, uh, what we call an opportunity to attack. So David has his hand up, I think. David? Yeah, I'll give it a, I'll give it a try. I, I had something, a phone call this morning that um, had elements of this. And um, so I did feel attacked and I tried to handle it in a certain way. So is, is that what you want us to share that experience? Thank you, David. Yeah, much appreciated. Okay. Um, so the phone call at some point, um, 
he was calling me back from the night before where he couldn't talk to me. And he said, do you want me to call in the morning? So he called me early in the morning and um, I, I would characterize um, what I did at that point in the conversations. I might've been a little bit wandering, not really focused. So he stopped me and said, wait a minute, you're wasting my time. Um, you told me to call you because you had some serious issue to talk about. And I, and I just, wow, stop, you know, ouch. So I got the ouch. I was empathizing with myself at that point. That was the step one, I think. And then I, I shared with him that, uh, that was a pretty powerful stop. A pre, uh, I, I felt attacked. I told him I felt attacked yeah. and and then um, somehow with some Aikido moves, we, I, I stayed with it. And I guess the, the element of me acknowledging that he was calling me back and that he intended to have, to support me in a conversation and, and that I, I admitted to that I, I think I did wander all over the place and that I didn't have the same energy now that I did last night. And, um, and so I asked him, where, where is this coming from? Um, you know, and, and then he opened up about having a, basically a kind of a battle with his old girlfriend. Great example, David. But an example of what we can say is, is good practice. In other words, it, 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 and again, you, you used one of the moves that was in the, what we shared earlier, where is this coming from? Which is uh, ideally, you know, it's one of the sort of a, a start move. It, it's, it's really nice, um, especially if there's sort of blame or aggression like that. So again, you, we could try that on the map as something that you could, you know, we could all explore about how, how would you get smoother at that? Um, that it, it, that's all, you know, if you're interested, we, we can do that. I've, I've taken note of the approximately what the, uh, sorry about the spelling on that, but wait a minute, you're wasting my time. You're meant to ring me with something interesting. Right, <laughs> that could be a nice, uh, um, and I think to practice on the map. But yeah, and a, a good one to explore. You know, where is this coming from, and then what do we do with it now? But we're all, you can always, and that's what we get the practice about is trying to find ways to get it smoother. So I think what you said was like you shared. Oh, I feel attacked. That's a move. It's, it's a move to say we've got a back step. So we're going to sort of go. Oh, let me digest that, you know, sort of stepping back from it, which is coming back to that one place, really key. Um, sounds like you did a good bit of practice um, already, David. So, yes. uh, so well done on that, well done. I, uh, I, think, I'll, yeah. I think I'll continue to practice on it. And like you say, get smoother at it. <laughs> Much appreciated for the share. Has, has anybody got another, um, another one that maybe that they found that they didn't? And this takes humility, guys. <laughs> you gotta sort of step out of yourself and go, oh, I'm gonna share this to people that don't even know. Uh, but, there, there is this, yeah, um, again, how we work on this in, in the dojo is um, people will, are only sort of when they feel ready that they will share, you know, some people will come to a dojo practice and not, not give a case for months and so they sort of feel comfortable. Um, I, I remember uh, after, usually after about three or four sessions, people will, um, uh, start to sort of recognize that they're, uh, you know, that, that, that they, they've started to develop reflexes and that some, some of these th moves are actually giving them a bit more space. And I remember about, uh, sorry if I've told this one before because I think it's, it's, it, it's a key one in, in practice. It, it was uh, after about three or four sessions that uh, uh, there was a lady who used to come and she, after, after three or four sessions, she we'd asked her if so there any cases and she said well no I haven't got any cases today but she was kind of disappointed about this um and I was like well that's great you know you don't you don't have a case it means you didn't get attacked so wonderful and but she was kind of disappointed and she went off and then in the, the week uh the following week she came to the session but like this time she was like you know glowing almost that she had a case and even before we sort of asked she was telling us what happened there was a, there was a guy it wasn't his boss but it was a colleague and he had done some work and she had done some work and he came in with the sort of file and the thing so what sort of crappy work would you call this and she said she turned around with the notebook and she goes excellent i need a case for my verbal aikido tonight go on continue and she started to uh 
take note. And he said, no, 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 I don't mean to attack you. No, no, this is good. I need this. Go ahead, go ahead. So what sort of crappy work is this? And and, she, and you know, this re, this de-escalated the exchange absolutely immediately. And she was obviously delighted with herself. Um, but, you know, the, the, and again, we were always sort of happy to hear sort of the good shares and, and, and the, uh, the the movements that, that, that work, you know. Um, if, you, if, you ever, if anyone thinks that they, they could do um, you know, if, if there's anything that they heard that they could have done a little bit better about managing it, then this is the moment to share it. Otherwise, we've got two cases. We've got uh, You Think You're Always Right, which is just sort of a basic case. And we've got David's case. You guys can sort of play around with that. So last moments to give a share to see, see, see what a verbal like you response would be. OK, we've got Jeremy and SM. So Jeremy, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I got one. Um, it happened earlier this today, and I was talking about something I'm really excited to do. And uh, somebody said to me, they go, uh, yeah, but is that a priority right now? That's a good one. Hey, um, and was there anything that came after that, Jeremy? Um, yeah, I mean, in this instance, uh, my initial gut reaction was, you don't have any idea why I think that is a priority. So the criticism is kind of unjustified. But I was able to go, well, why, you know, all right, so what do you think a priority should be? Right? How, how should I go? How should I be going about that thing that you think is a priority? Uh, so that worked out pretty well, actually. But nice, yeah, good, good move. So good, so so that's a good one as well. Uh, is that a priority right now? Um, there, there's a nice move towards those sort of things. Is you very often when you're talking about time scales, it's nice to, to look at uh, what we, a scale. A scale movement is just a very simple movement going. So on a scale of one to ten, that's just, it's a question. So is that a priority now? On a scale of one to ten, good question. Um, I would say it's about an eight. And then again, you got to give your aligned response to that. You could also just respond to that with a very centered yes. Is that a priority right now for me? Yes. Anything else you want to know? <laughs> you know, there, there, there's, there's, there's different moves to it too. Um, so uh, somebody's put up uh, annoying, but we also the S SM. Sorry, please share. Thank you. Yeah, um, my name's Sandra. I just haven't changed my name in here. Um, I have a situation uh, we can see if the situation fits this method because um, I think the situation I said something that really triggered someone that they felt was an attack was a roommate once so I looked in my own freezer and thought hmm I thought I had more of this and I turned around and asked the person did you take any of these from me like and I'm was fairly neutral, a little bit, like a tiny bit of like suspicion and accusation. And he blew up screaming loud at me and like something about you can't talk to me like that, like setting really strict boundaries. Um, I can't remember the whole three sentences because I was completely shocked. And I actually screamed back, which I never do being like, hey, that's not what I meant. And then he left. Thank you, excellent for the share, Sandra. Really, really good, really interesting case. A little bit, a little bit more of an advance in the sense that it, 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 it's come from something that you've said. So there would be a sort of a double play in that. You, you, the other person, so if you're play, role playing this in the map, the other person is gonna say to you, gonna play your role, Sandra. So you, the other person is gonna say, did you take anything from me? And then the, if you wanna call it overreaction, and that's just okay. Why would you say that to me? And you know, and, and that's it. And uh, so, you remember the initial response to "Did you take any of these from me?" My first sentence. No, the, the your your roommate's initial response. I think it's either I have done nothing wrong, or it's don't speak to me like that something about respect or don't speak to yeah. it's one of them. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. 
Okay. Hmm. That's a that's a really good. That's good. We got re, that's that's a really nice case, Sam. Thank you very much for that. So I put that up. Is did you take any of that from me? And then don't speak to me like that. That should be an exclamation mark at the end. Okay, Luke, great to have you again back. Um, have you got a share or a, a, yeah, a case you got to bring? Yeah, I actually unfortunately have to leave at the hour, so I'm going to probably miss the practice. But I was inspired by by your Sandra and wanted to share. Similarly, something that I said this morning that it was actually sort of two exchanges um, with me and my partner. And so, um, yeah, she, there's actually a lot here, so I don't have to unpack it all, but I'll throw it to you. It was sort of like a nonverbal attack that I've experienced. I was in the middle of doing something on my computer. My partner came down and just expressing like really genuine interest in what I was doing, but I didn't want to be distracted. And so I think that was one that I would love help on is like, what about when there's sort of good faith and it's just interest, but it's not wanted, how to respond from that centered place. Um, that's sort of one thing, sort of a nonverbal. Um, so, so then I responded with kind of an attack and I forget, I, I, I don't know if the context will totally make sense, but I made some sarcastic remark like, oh, here she is. And it was clearly like an attack. <laughs> and then she responded, by being like, what is this? Like, what what is this happening right now? So there was this whole, like, there's a lot of layers there and any of them you could take. Well, that's, it is good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, how do you respond to when someone is, you know, sort of coming into your thing, your space and it's like, it's, it's not a verbal attack. Um, they're usually a lot easier, those attacks, if, if you just remember to get sent. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you feel you'll feel the tension. Yeah, feel the tension managing, and then you're like, okay, just a second. Okay, and there is the good time to to practice what we talked about last time. I think was 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 MVC. It's to go, okay, right. I'm observing that you're really enthusiastic about this. Um, I'm feeling that I need a bit of space and I would really need, uh, you know, and you, you said, and you, and you continue uh, and share, and then you make a proposal. That, that's the sort of the NBC movement then afterwards, which is, uh, will save a lot of escalations. Uh, but th th that said, I, one thing I've noticed from what, from what your, uh, your partner uh, commented, she goes, what is happening here? Which is an IQ, we, we, it's a verb like you don't move, which is basically a metacom. You, you get to describe the communication. You, it, and, and it can, it's kind of an inviting move as well, because you're inviting the other person out to explore what's this communication. Let's talk about, you know, um, but it is important to sort of go back to it because it can be seen as kind of a dodging move. You're not actually talking about the what you know the core of it, the, but you 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 bring the other person a little bit out to to sort of stand over what's going on. So what's happening here? Are we are we attacking each other? Or you know, it can be done in a very humorous way, you know, um, uh, and uh, so it, it it also lends itself to what we call inclusive humor because you're not saying what are you doing, you're saying well what's what are we doing here? What's happening to us? Um, so yeah, be careful about that. Um, but yeah, really interesting share, Luke. Um, and I, I don't know, there, there, you can, yes, all these sort of things we kind of fusion into uh, practice on the map. So for example, it's come up a couple of times today in patients, if, if for sort of more seasoned practitioners will say, okay, so you're using the role, for example, did you take something from me? Um, don't speak to me like that. But the person also is adding a bit of impatience, for example, into the way that they're playing their role. Just makes it more interesting, more of a challenge, of course. But uh, yeah, it's, it depends on how good attackers you guys are today. So I'm going to I'm going to be able to to watch you do that in just a moment. Um, okay, um, Luke, does that give you sort of uh, something to play with for next time? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, has anybody else got anything? I think we're good. Okay, let's, so let's do this guys. Um, I'm gonna just uh, just give you a quick reminder. Uh, we've got the context, so you, you guys can choose a context. Um, you're gonna be in groups of three or four. So in, in each group, there will be at least one person uh, being the attacker. If it's your case, or if you wanna bring, if you feel more comfortable in, in, a, in, in a group three or four sharing, hey, Here's my case, actually, I just thought of something now. Share a case, uh, but you will be the attacker first. Key to remember. So whatever case you bring, you're gonna be the attacker. Whoever feels most comfortable, uh, if it's the known as a case, choose from 
Um, did you take one of these from me? And the other person going, you don't speak to me like that. Um, uh, yes, that's not a priority now. Um, even just you're so annoying. That's a, that's a good one. You're so annoying. You can say, what do you mean? Where does that come from? And what do you do about it now? Uh, that could be a nice, nice way to, to, to use that move. So remember, practicing, if you can today, that nice uh, uh, timeline cadre where you're saying, what does it mean? Where does it come from? Where, you know, what's the source of that? Where, you know, what led us up to this moment? Anything like that. And then up, move towards, well, where do we go to from here? Again, your focus is not to resolve <laughs> the issue necessarily. The focus is to start to recognize where there is a destabilization. You might sort of sense a destabilization with the other person. Okay, um, if you get that far, you've done really, really well. Um, okay. Now, Fred, you've made a comment just before you go in composting or aggression. I do want to understand what that means. Oh, uh... Sandra and I were chatting back and forth oh, about being verbally aggressive and uh, using it as, as compost to grow something new. So, uh, nice. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. Recycling. Okay. So, uh, Peter, can you set up the rooms? Uh, if people are in difficulty, can you put me on as, as, as host, uh, Peter, so that I can, I can, if people want to call me, they can. Um, and I'm going to be popping in and out of a few of the rooms today. All right, so you have a uh, host access now. You'll have to put people into breakout All right, rooms. great, I'll do that. Um, okay. Ryan and uh, Alexandra want to be witness witnesses or observers. Okay, uh, great. Mar Margaret, too. Okay, so how many people in total? Uh, and if you have to leave right now, uh, I think Luke has to leave, just slip out, uh, so make it easier for... Um, yes. Yeah, if, 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 if you're on board, that means you're, you're, you're getting on the map, basically. Or as other people have done, they can say, I just want to observe, and that's, per that's perfectly fine too. Okay, how many people we got? So, so tell me again, Peter, uh, who, who wants to, do, to just watch? Uh, Margaret, uh, Alexandra, and Ryan, uh, and then Elliot as well, but I'm going to try to convince them to uh, roll. Um, okay, hold on a sec. All right, just a little bit of logistics here, guys. Um, all right, so Margaret. Okay, that's fine. And who else? Uh, Ryan, Ryan and Alexandra. Okay. All right. Um, okay, I think we're good. Nice few rooms. All right, so you'll be in a group of three, four, five. Um, if Actually, three or four is better, yeah. Three or four, if there is, yeah, oh, that's good. Okay, um, all right, guys, I'm gonna give you, uh, let's say 15 minutes to just get as much practice as you can done, get done in 15 minutes. And we'll be back, um, I'll give you like one minute, you'll see a sort of one minute thing, so that means it's time to, to, to round it up. Um, just get as much practice as you can, in, in, as you can. Get the person to the one attack, one sequence of movements, and once you've done the sequence of movements, um, moving on to the next person. Don't spend too much time chatting about what you could have done or what you couldn't have done. Try and get everybody uh, five minutes practice if you can. All right. Okay. Uh, enjoy, guys. I'll be popping in. See you in a minute. Okay. Yeah. So welcome back, guys. Um, I hope everybody got at least a little bit of practice done in that. Um, what uh, I'm interested in is, again, of course, your shares, your questions, your attacks are specifically, if you find anything specifically difficult, um, now is a good time to, to share and to sort of bring it to the light. Jeremy has his hand. Stance is hard. Stance is really, really hard when you're being attacked. Like, ow. <laughs> that's that's all. That's 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 my thing. It is, and and, and it's, it's it, I, I'm really so happy that you came back with your in the first words you were talking about is the stance, is that posture, is it to have that because that's what it's about. It's not. I mean, we give you the techniques to be able to play around with them, but in essence, yeah, you're aiming at just sort of coming back as soon as you can to that posture. Um, again, you, you can you can choose which one you go back to first. 
people have their go-to moves, you know, and it's, it's nice to, to have a sort of a little, what do you mean, as a go-to move um, or something like that, which gives you that space to go, all right, and now back to my, you will be taken inevitably off your center. It's, it, it's what the practice is about. Uh, although we did, we, I did see uh, with Evan and their group as well, that they, you know, they may need, need a little bit of work for them to actually feel that they're being attacked because they've got just a very large, if you've got a really big center, if you've got a really good um, uh, sort of uh, just natural posture, it can take a lot to actually to, to, to feel attacked. Okay. Um, all right, any more shares on that? Yeah, I just wanted to speak a little bit about that, um, what you're referring to from our group. Um, you know, this is just a, I don't know if it's something that has an answer or not, right? But like, I was, I was beginning to say something about this be right before the groups ended. Um, that, so I find myself sort of structuring my life in such a way that verbal attacks are not something that I experience. Um, and, you know, from a martial arts perspective, say, going back to Sun Tzu or anyone later, right, you, you know, the, the, the primary thing is to avoid the necessity of combat, right? Absolutely. And so then if, like, in, in the extraordinarily rare situations in which I find myself in a serious verbal altercation, then, you know, um, this sort of goes back to what Ryan had alluded to earlier, you know, in that, like, so if I, if I, um, am actually in, in one of the very rare verbal altercations that I might encounter in my life, then I'm not going to do verbal Aikido. I'm going to do verbal, you know, um, Muay Thai or BJJ. I'm going to do verbal beat the shit out of you. And, and that seems to work really well for me. So um, I'm, I'm curious about this, you know, this dynamic, like, it, it, is there a related sense of, say, like, verbal meta Aikido, if that makes sense? And like, okay, avoiding the situations where verbal attacks happen in the first place or something like that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there, there's kind of a, a sort of a larger perspective on it um, that, that yeah, you can you can do things kind of on a regular basis just to to uh, increase your center. Uh, and I, I, I kind of believe that the, the more you focus on just that aspect of practice, which is sort of coming to center, the the more you attract certain things into your life. You know. Um, I don't know if that answers the, the entirety of your question Ziki, because there was a lot to it, but uh, it, in essence, it really always comes back down to that. Um, is there that's, actually, to that? that's actually very clarifying because I think that's a reason that I have a hard time relating to the particular exercise, say we were doing or whatever, is because I don't feel off-centered by verbal attacks. Mm -hmm. And so that's it's, it's hard to relate to a practice of getting back to center when you're like, well, but you're, you're just talking to me. Okay, cool. You know, like, great. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Um, there, there's, the, we use verbal like Aikido for verbal attacks. Um, again, the core principles always stay the same, but uh, whether, it, I think I mentioned a bit last week, but, you know, it, it can be something other than verbal. It doesn't really matter what it is. It, in, in any moment, if it's tension, if, like I said, I think last week was about my printer, you know, if my printer wasn't working when you want it to work and you need it to work, then that's a moment where you're going to go, oh, tension, right? And the same principles apply. It's, okay, I get back to my center. I use whatever means I have to understand what's going on. Again, that's that second move. And then the third move, say, I, I look to see how we can sort of move forward with this in sort of in a, in a constructive way. Um, so it doesn't have to be verbal, uh, but if you've got other situations, Evan, that are, you know, that things that really get on you or whatever it is, these are moments of tension that, that again, that, that you can practice spiritual like you or whatever. Yeah. Awesome. All right, I think so. I just thought in the chat that I think, I think this, some guys want to go back on the mat, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, is, there, is there anything else? Any other shares on that specific practice that you guys just did, uh, you know, uh, practicing at the moves? Did you notice destabilization? That's what I'm interested in that. Did you have a bit of fun? Interested in that too. Any other shares, questions before we finish up today's code? Yeah, so when I was attacking just now, uh, uh, I was sort of tapping into interrupting the other person. Like they were beginning to formulate it. And I was like, no, 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 no. I decide what runs here or whatever. Uh, 
And I wonder if there's like a way to avoid that without like, you know, again, triggering someone again, like you, from yeah, the defense point of view. You can, uh, well, patience is the very first thing on that, I would say. Um, when somebody's continually interrupting you, uh, you do need to sort of be patient. I would, again, as we sort of talked about in that first call today, which was make sure that they've said everything that they want to say before you actually start to, to go into whatever it is that you want to say. Silence, little spaces like that really have enormous effects. So if somebody interrupts you, before you speak again, you will wait until they're finished and mark it with the silence. That has an effect because it, it, you're sort of deciding on the rhythm of the exchange at that moment. So that's one aspect of it. The other is that when you're, um, uh, somebody talked about meta earlier, and that's kind of really interesting direction to go in, because if it, it, it truly happens, you can say, okay, like Duke's uh, partner was saying, you know, uh, well, what's happening here? It, how free flowing is this conversation for you, or anything like that? You know, uh, you, you can go into sort of a meta thing, and then just sort of say, listen, how about if we, you know, either say we interrupt each other all the time, or we uh, we, we try to let each other finish, or we find something else. Have you got an idea? Something like that, you know. But you would only propose if we interrupt each other all the time, if you are genuinely willing to go along with it, not in a sort of snarky, sarcastic way. It's got to be, you know, and that's what's going to sort of bring bring the exchange back to the center. Does that answer your question, Zay? Yeah, it definitely helps. Uh, but I think so. The way that I was making it work was as soon as like Elliot was uh, who was my partner was like trying to set a frame, I would immediately deliberately interrupt him and just reassert my frame. And I'd already flipped the script so that he had to qualify it towards me. So it wasn't like I was not under pressure at all. And I was just repeatedly saying how disappointed I was in him. Oh, he's not up to shape or whatever. And as soon as he would try to say, okay, let's try this or let's try that, I would immediately cut him off and bring him back to the, the pressure of the situation. Oh, that's what. Who are you working with, Sahil? With Elliot, who's here. Okay, well, hey, that's what would be interesting is actually hear how how that actually situation ended for Elliot. Because at the end of it, if he came back to it, and even though the other person was being what they were being, if he was, if he was able to sort of to, to be at least aligned with himself on that, then you know that that's the sort of again you got to step into this idea of this. If the other person wants to feel that they've won. Let them feel that they've won, you know, that's okay. It can be a part of saving your face. If you come back to your own center. So Elliot, do you want to share, please? Yeah, sure. I, I was going to ask, because I haven't been here for previous sessions. I think I was in one a long time ago, but um, someone in response to Sahil and I engaging talked about kind of the framing, not accepting their frame, and I didn't, I mean, I think it's in a sense my natural way, but I don't know if uh, I got that that was what you're trying to do, not accept their frame. Um, and so you're asking for feedback now on how I yeah, felt. Yeah, how you felt going through that exchange. I felt fine. He, uh, you know, I thought he was being a great partner and really trying to challenge me, but there, I didn't feel like I needed to accept his anger or, or his... Um, the framing, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, not, not familiar with the verbal Aikido language, the way I would describe it normally is, you know, just trying to be empathetic and, and show them that you're trying to understand them. And I tried that. I'd be curious from those who are observing kind of what, especially knowing them being more familiar with the verbal Aikido piece, like what would they have shifted or changed Sandra had suggested, uh, he was saying, so he was saying at one point, you know, I'm trying to help you by guiding you to like bring some value to this thing. And she had suggested that I should have said, thank you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought that was fun. Um, yeah, it was, it was actually pretty fun. I'm glad uh, Peter bullied me into it. <laughs> Okay, well, really good feedback. Thank you very much for that, Elliot. Yeah, um, and you kind of illustrate so much about um, one of the reasons we do the verbal stretching. And the verbal stretching is that just that, that posture work on 
being able to express yourself in a centered way, but also to be able to listen from that sort of neutral position. Um, and the more you do that, the more you kind of start to sense that what a person is saying belongs to them. Whatever it is, it belongs to them. Now, you can start to, to look at it, explore it further, get closer to it, um, see uh, many aspects of it, but it does belong to them. And it's what you do with it then um, that can possibly make it into that, that us uh, future if that's the direction you were able to, to explore with them. So um, really good, really good uh, feedback on that, that exchange. Has anybody else got another sort of uh, share that they'd like to give to us or any questions? This is gonna be our last one before we finish up today. Okay, you all seem good. Okay. Peter, do you wanna, do you wanna, oh, speak ahead? Yeah, can I, I, I just want to share how my, what my experience was. Yeah, it was uh, quite helpful to have somebody else in my shoes. And it seemed so simple, the way they responded back to what I felt attacked with. And um, yeah, it was, at that point, I was so shook that I didn't, I didn't think of asking a really direct question. Yeah, and uh, yeah, also moving to the harmonious state was like physically and like energetically really calming. I felt my body in a very like a clenching state when I was the attacker. And then when I decided, okay, I can, I'm gonna move to a harmonious state, I felt really nice. I felt like sort of opening a door to connection. That was really fun to notice. Excellent. Thank you, Kriyati. Excellent, excellent share from that out. Um, guys, uh, it's been an absolute amazing uh, three sessions with you, Peter. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for letting me do this. Um, I, I'm always very happy to share, as you know, um, anything about the practice. Um, I, I'm just going to just to give a final share, if I can, Peter, um, just with a couple of things. Um, just if people are interested in sort of going a little bit further into this. Um, so that you know okay are you trying to share your screen again yeah, yeah. You got it. i gotta give you access okay there thank you can you guys see that oh yeah that's what we did that's what we just did um so yeah um just quick overview of what we did today so we did of course look at the what the why the how you guys stepped onto the mat um, you've given your observations, your sensations, your questions on that. Uh, and again, we looked at that deep, deep dive on step three. Question is, yeah, if, what, if you guys want to uh, explore any further, uh, verbalaikido.org, right in the middle of the screen there, that's the, uh, the official website for if you're interested in classes, if you're interested in exploring further, um, stepping onto the mat, you can, you can join the dojo. It's once a week in English, once a week in French. Um, uh, that you can you know pop in and, and just check it out see if you like it but you guys have already got a bit of experience uh, to, to, to sense what it is already today um, and of course you can contact me you can share um, any other feedback you have on what we did Peter uh, I'm gonna let it over to you my friend all right uh, beautiful thank you so much uh, Luke for coming into the stoa for this three-parter uh, I greatly enjoyed the experience and I imagine a lot of people here did as well. So thank you so much. Uh, again, you can check out uh, Luke's uh, website. Uh, I'll put it on the, for those who are watching on YouTube, I'll put it on uh, the YouTube channel as well. You can book him for a one-on-one, -on -one, bring him into your organization. A lot of good stuff there. And I do recommend also checking out his book um, from conflict to conversation. Uh, like even having this framework in mind, just like it's very helpful, like knowing all these kind of like movements, but then practicing is, is, is another thing. Uh, and then also Evan, for those of you in the chat or here today, Evan is going to have a post um, verbal keto session. So you can check that out. Uh, so that being said, Luke, everyone, thank you so much for coming to the store today. <laughs>